So I'm between you and a coffee. Sorry. <laughs> that could be good. That could be bad. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's it's a great pleasure to be here. And I always think what what I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm from Brazil, very far from here. Ninety-five percent of my customers are in Brazil. What actually I'm doing here? Yeah. It's there are two things. First place, I learned a lot in this place. I learned a lot with you. Just talking with people on the on the coffee, I learn a lot of new things. In the slides, sometimes there's a little bit of information there. A uh, little bit thing. Someone talked yesterday, VX lens. VX lens. Hey, really? You can do VRP between two data centers? I didn't know that. That's that's a cool information. Something that we really uh, sometimes we get these pieces of information that makes a difference in what you're doing. The second thing is that I'm here, the second reason that I'm here is I want to give back a little bit for the community. I have a company called SIPPOS that's it basically do things on top of free switch and open SIPs and asterisk. I'm using open source since 2004, 2003. We're using a lot. We, are, we based our business on open source. So to give back a little bit no, at, at least a little bit, it's important in, from our perspective. Uh, today I'm going to talk about VoIP pre-installation tests, how to improve voice quality from the start. Uh, it's probably very, a little bit different from what you saw on the, on the banner. Uh, my plan was to talk about RabbitMQ in the first place, and I changed my mind as usual. Huh? The, what's the idea? As David Defet said in the beginning of this presentation, it's, it's nice to have something to take away. So I'll show you some uh, pre-installation tests, something that you can download. There's a Git, Git, GitHub server, something that you can actually use. And I think it's really interesting. So this is my company, it's Sippos. We are in Brazil, we are a leader in tier two providers. We provide soft switch, session border controllers, and posted PBX and call centers, more or less what most of the people are doing lately. I have to say that hosted PBXs are growing <coughs> really fast. Most of the providers are starting to provide more services on top of their own infrastructure. And there are other projects such as the telephony fraud prevention systems, VoIP tests, the service desk tracker. These other projects, we are uh, slowly putting all the other projects in the open source. So the telephony fraud protection system will be open source. I hope to 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 talk about, about it uh, in other presentation. But let's go today. Uh, this month I did something really, it's funny to, to do a presentation close, <laughs> tied to a place. Usually I prefer to, to walk a little bit. But how do you feel when you spend months of your time to acquire a new customer, yet you lose this customer in the first, the first week? Yeah. I was helping uh, a friend with some Hosted PBX company. I went there, he was struggling with some things, and I said, Okay, let me help you. And one of the problems with hosted PBX was maybe the five communications of the same thing, etc. You go to the customer infrastructure, and the customer infrastructure is not good. Or you have a problem there, or you have an outage, an application layer business, or uh, the firewall is not open, or something is not good enough. And then you lose your customer in the first week. So you spend a lot of time to acquire. There's an Acquisition cost for any customer, and you lose your customer in the first week because the, the quality of the voice is not good. So what we can do about it? So what are the technical problems we're trying to solve? One-way audio, mute calls, and robotic and distorted voice. We lose a lot of customers because of this three. Uh, there's a shark eating the, the ears of it. That was the basic idea. Terribly designed. <laughs> Uh, so these are the problems we have when we are starting an implementation. We are putting a new customer in, boom, one-way out. And guys, this, I have moved from my inside PBX to this hosted PBX, and this is a piece of, okay, no, no need to go so. The business problems we are trying to solve, make it right in the first installation, no reworks. So you send a person there, and then you send it again. Okay, we have one-way audio. Let's see what happened with one-way audio. Okay, we have an AOG. You have an application layer gateway. There are ports that are not open. Uh, something is wrong and we have to rework. Avoid customers canceling in the first week because of voice, issue, voice issues. It's very common. Maybe in the wholesale is even worse. You have a problem, guy take out, take out his retractor. 
And then you start to call, please put again your traffic to me, put again your traffic to me, please, please, please. And very difficult. Keep a good reputation in terms of voice quality. Offer a guaranteed SLA. I can sell a circuit. If I can measure the SLA of the circuit, I can sell a different circuit to a customer. And re the reduction of the overall churn. Reduce the, the number of times you lose your customer to get another one. The acquisition cost of a customer is, is one key parameter for any uh, software as a service provider. Who are the most affected? Unified communication as a service, hosted PBX, any cloud VoIP services affected by this, by this problem. Problem causes, what causes the one way out? I think the biggest cause is ALG, application layer gateway. They're all the providers that I know have some instructions, how to disable ALG on your platform, how to disable ALG on Microtech, how to disable ALG on Sonic Wall, uh, just the good ones, Cisco and all of them. It's, it's a pain. Misconfigured firewalls. That's the second problem. Say, is the firewall open? Yes, I have opened the ports of the firewall. And then you go there, no, the ports were not open and we still have one way audio. Then you have to troubleshoot. You put your technician to analyze the SDP, oh, the SDP is correct, this is the voice where it's supposed to be, but the firewall is, is closed. The second is packet loss. Packet loss gen usually generates robotic voice and hiccups or blanks. Jitter, voice distortion. Latency, voice collisions is also terrible. You start talking, the other people start talking at the same time because you have uh, too much latency. RTP proxy overload sometimes. Uh, sometimes it happens too. If you don't enforce the RTP proxy correctly, <coughs> and you have high, high CPS, you exhaust the ports and then you start having audio voice. So these are the most common causes for for audio voice issues. SLA, service level agreement for VoIP. So what is the ideal, ideal situation? No Augie, no ALG, no application layer gateways affecting our voice. All UDP ports open. Latency below 150 milliseconds. Packet loss equals zero. And jitter below 20 milliseconds. So this is something that we need to sure that if we want to have a good voice. Testing, how do we test? Uh, I have seen, before starting to develop something, say, okay, what I can use from the market to test my circuit before I use. Is there an algae tester? Yes, there are some on the, on the internet. We did something, some a little bit simpler. Uh, how do we test the, the quality? You can use a speed test, but the speed test will never go to your own server. It will go to somewhere else's, someone else's server. Uh, TCP tests, I could use web sockets or something. Uh, usually, I, d I don't want to test over TCP, I want to test over UDP because the communication will be over UDP and I need to use this, the exact same ports because if I have a QoS, like quality of service, it will work on the UDP ports, it will not work on the ICMP, it will not work in other protocols. So I have to test over, <coughs> over, over UDP. So we decided to create a new tool I got some of the interns. There's always an intern to, to this side project. I say, mm -hmm. let me do something uh, on this. Let me, let me start with Augie testing and then we do to RTP testing. So we created this small project called the IPSLA, inspired on the, the Cisco IPSLA, where they test the RTP proxy. It's an open source project developed in Python. Developer is Vitor. Vitor was, was one of the interns. It was actually now one of the, of the employees. It's here on the GitHub, so you can download uh, the project if you want, and you can run in your own infrastructure. So it's not it's not closed at source; it's completely open for you. And okay, uh, algae testing. So the first part of the the problem was how to test all, uh, how to test uh, application layer gateway. The idea to to test what we have created something very simple. You send an invite with the user AOG test to an OpenSIP server. And in the OpenSIP server, I can detect if I have or not an, an application layer gateway using a simple, a simple <coughs> algorithm. Uh, what, I, what I did, in the Python script, I have created two headers, the xalg pre-IP. On the pre-IP, I know the previous IP of the mm -hmm. system. I did a, an MD5 hash on this pre-IP to avoid any router changing this IP too. 
And in the x all test, I have a number from 1 to 7 to define the types of tests that I want to do. So in the x all test, I will test the free IP against the contact, against the VIA, and or against the SDP header, the session description protocol header. And the, in the x all free IP, I have an MD5 hash of the original IP address. So to test what we do, very, very, very simple. Um, I have it here, the OpenSIP script. I got the, this OpenSIP CFG is the basic OpenSIP CFG, the residential configuration script, the one you have. Just in the beginning of the script, I just created an, if the $RU is Augie test, route to Augie test, or if not forbidden, it's just for Augie testing. You can put it in your own server, this, this is more amount of code. And here at the end, we have the simple logic. Augie test. So in the beginning, I just parsed the SIP header to get the IP address from the contact, from the VIA, and from the session description protocol, from, from the SDP. And I hash all of them. And then below, I just compare. So the result of the test is very simple. If I send a 200 OK, you don't have AUG. If I send a 500, you have AUG detected on the OpenSIP server. So it's a simple script on OpenSIPs to detect if you have AUG or not. In the Python script, what it's going to do, it will generate an invite with the information. If it receives a 200 OK, there's no AUG on the system. If you receive a 500, you have AUG in the system. And simple. So with this, we can predict if we have an ALG test or not. Let's see it working. So here I have the client. I hope you can see. I can, I can increase the size. This is Windows, so it, it runs on, on Python, can run on Windows or, or Linux. Let me increase a little bit. Okay. So we have this PySIP CTL. Uh, AUG is the test. Uh, the host is, let me... It's hard to remember the DOS. <laughs> okay, PySIPCTL ALG dash dash host the num the na uh, the name of the host where you have your OpenSIP server the port fifty sixty. It runs okay. Performing the submission port, no algae detected. So he went to the server, sent the pre IP and discovered that we don't have algae and this this connection to to our server on, at Amazon. So this is the first part of the of the test. Very simple, very. Okay, next. The second part is. So this is demo of Augie detection. Open ports and voice quality. The second thing is: Is your firewall really open? Because there's always this problem: Is the firewall open? The other the other side say it's open, and you say. Okay, we are having problems with the audio, one-way audio, mute calls. Is, is really the firewall open? So I want to test uh, the RTP, the actual UDP. So the diagram, what we usually do, we start two RTP echo servers on, the, on our servers. Let's suppose I have an RTP server, an RTP proxy. And usually we run from 10,000 to 20,000, the UDP ports. So I usually borrow the first and the last port from the range for the RTP echo server, <coughs> just to make an echo. So I can test the first address, the first port, and the last port of the, the system. Right, so that's the whole idea. So let's see how the RTP tests run. So the sequence. The first thing you have to do is to start two server process, one in, in the port 10,000 and another in the port 20,000 just to make sure you can test the first and the last, uh, the last port of the system. And then with the client, you can simply run the PySIPCTL client uh, RTP <coughs> and host and test the system. Very simple and very clever. The same software, but now I'll use three loops for the 10,000. 
Okay, tested. So what we can see here is application started, performing the RCP test. We have some pre-packets. Latency, 65 milliseconds. Uh, latency lower, 55 milliseconds. And here, 29. Uh, it's, it's what I have seen here. It's a little bit more jitter because we had a lot of people in the same, in the same Wi-Fi. Uh, and then you test the, the other port, like say 20,000. And okay, so what we have here, there's no AUG, and I know the at least the first and last port of the, the range are open using UDP. Uh, the latency is decent in this case, packet loss zero, a little bit of jitter. I tried to make calls at home, it was perfect from the hotel, I didn't have any, any issue. So it's a good indication if you have or not the, a, good, uh, a good network. What, he, what we also did in our version, I haven't published this on the, on the open source version because it was a hack, is to publish the results on the, on the Elasticsearch. Put the name of the circuit, put it put in an Elasticsearch and you can monitor all, the, all your customer circuits to see. There are things to do, yes, we are working in a, to generate the the exe uh, single a single file just to download it will be easier for users to test uh, I'm working on the elastic search part to to make it not a hack but to have parameters for to pass where's your elastic search what are the passwords and put everything correctly but I truly believe that it's a, a simple tool that can save you a lot of time In summary, so very simple, very quick to void, void quality issues can cause you early cancellations and churn. So it is, a, is it a problem for you? How many of you have had this problem about having early cancellations and people complaining, losing customers in the first days, rework? Yeah. Uh, and, and actually to troubleshoot a new call, it's, hey, it's perfect. Perfect. Huh? perfect tool for us. Yeah. You have to go there. You have to go there and troubleshoot and, uh, and it's a thing, yes. And the interesting thing is when uh, you have the range of the IP ports uh, mm -hmm. that's wrong. So uh, the, the uh, calls are only randomly problematic. Yes. Because uh, you have only like 10% of the ports that goes. Yeah. It would be, would be lovely to have on the RTP proxy a configuration to create yeah. RTP echo ports. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Something very simple. Just if I send you an RT, an UDP, send me back. There's nothing else that I, I need to do to, to make yeah, the test. Uh, void quality issues increase the cost of technical support. So rework. Rework is, is really a thing. Detecting ALG firewall and quality issues in the beginning can save your money, can save your time, uh, but it's late, it's too late for me, for Alex, and for Bogdan, but it can also save your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, Claudio. Can we have some quick questions for Claudio? Raise your hands. Anybody? No questions at all? Okay, everybody wants coffee, it seems. Yes. So, Thank you again, Flavio. One more round of applause for this gentleman. Hello.